It has been a busy week at Stoke City with the departure of Gary Rowett as manager and the arrival of his replacement, Nathan Jones. So what do fans thinking about the appointment, and will Jones kick off his reign in style at Brentford today? Debating these points and more are this week's fans panel of Simon Marson, from Stone, Lee Lysette, from Audley, and Jason Martin, from Kettering. What's your team? Simon Marson, my team would be, Butland, Edwards, Shawcross, Williams, Peters, Allen, Woods, Edibo, Ince, Afobi, McLean. I would go with what I believe to be our strongest back four, even though, Peters apart, I don't think any of them are good enough. Ediba would be in front of Klugas for me as he is more direct and athletic. Instant McLean picked themselves and I think the new boss will get the best from Mifobi. I think Jones will stick with the 4-3-3 for this week only until he can implement his own ideas and formations. Lee Lysette, if his previous job is anything to go by then the new manager's preferred system is a 4-4-2 with a diamond midfield and the fullbacks providing the width. Therefore I expect this to be the formation at Brentford. My team would be Butland, Edwards, Williams, Martins Indy, Peters, Woods, Allen, Klukas, Ince, Farahino, Afobi. Jason Martin, it's far more difficult than usual given the arrival of Nathan Jones, presuming that he will be implementing his 4-4-2 diamond formation from the offset, I'd like to see a few changes. Right back has been a revolving door this season, but if he's ready I'd like to see what Bauer can bring to the championship. I'd also like to see Martin's Indy partnering Shaw Cross again at the back. Midfield is a real mess, especially for wide players, if the diamond comes into play. I'd expect the mainstays of Woods and Allen to remain in the side, while Klukas can give us a presence on the left. I'm uncomfortable with Ince in the number 10 role, but I can't see how he can be left out given his performances this season. Nathan Jones Dreaming of his next big well tart perhaps, image, David Davies, PA wire, I'll be damned if I don't fit Boyan in though, so he can go up front to supply a phobie. Whilst I have been very impressed with Barahino this season, I just feel like Benick is the more proven scorer at this level and could really take off with the right supply. My team, Butland, Bauer, Shawcross, Martins Indy, Peters, Woods, Klukas, Allen, Ince, Afobi, Boy, Yan. What's your prediction? Simon Marson, I'm going for 2-2. Two two. In my opinion our defense is incapable of keeping clean sheets. The defense is the reason for our poor season. Its lack of pace means we are always so deep. One goal for a phobie, and Crouch to get an equalizer from the bench. Lee Lysette, the change of manager has certainly given the fans a boost. However, I suspect it will take time to turn things around. I'll go for an entertaining 2-2 draw. Jason Martin, Brentford, aren't the beast they were back in August, but I don't think Jones will be building Rome in a day either. I'm going for 2-2, showing more positivity going forward with the occasional reminder of why we're in this mess to begin with. Any other business? Simon Marson, I was one of the few that didn't want Rowett to go. I'm insistent that this squad needs two to three transfer windows to be sorted following the catastrophic recent transfer windows. I don't know anything about Nathan Jones, but he will get my support. It's a very brave decision by the board because if this doesn't work where do we go then? However, the board should be applauded for their bravery. I genuinely believe we can still make the playoffs and that will be the target given to Jones. Having said that, he clearly needs time and our fan base must understand that. Stoke City legend explains his role in Nathan Jones' appointment It would appear that the appointment has galvanized the club somewhat but if they finally fired recruitment chief Mark Cartwright I think everyone would be on board and pulling in one direction. Lee Lysette, well it's been an interesting few weeks resulting in the dismissal of Gary Rowe this week and hit being replaced by Luton Town's manager Nathan Jones within the space of 24 hours. I don't think anyone was surprised about the sacking of Rowett. 
I was reluctantly with him until the Christmas period more in the hope he could turn us around than anything else. The football was poor apart from the odd occasion, too slow and labored, plenty of possession but mainly backwards and sideways without causing any problems for the opposition. Proud Christian who can still give the hairdryer treatment when needed even after the dismal defeat at Birmingham I thought that maybe if we put on a show against Bolton and Bristol City and get 6 points then we wouldn't be too far away from the playoffs. As it was the Bolton game swung it for me. There was no improvement from the previous game or any signs of us getting better. The Bristol City and Shrewsbury results just added further salt to the wound. Roat's constant digging out players in public and fighting with the fan base showed a complete lack of respect and professionalism, which added further fuel to the fire. So now we turn over a new leaf and welcome Nathan Jones. Nathan who? Most Stokies have been asking this week. Manager Gary Rowett has been sacked by Stoke City. After research you'll find he is a bright up-and-coming manager who has taken Luton from 18th in League 2 to 2nd place in League 1 with an entertaining style in a short space of time. The board have made a bold and brave decision which took us all by surprise. Now the club and its fans must all reunite and get behind the new man. This is a difficult job and we wish Nathan well. Only time will tell as to whether this appointment is a disaster or a stroke of genius. We are all hoping it's the latter. Jason Martin, I have to commend the board for their decision to appoint Nathan Jones, a decision which filled me with as much surprise as it did delight. While there are questions around his ability to manage at this level, I believe it's immaterial that he's coming from a side who operated in League 2 and League 1 over the last 18 months. Every word from Nathan Jones's first interview as Stoke City manager Our recent cup runs have taught me that football is football, regardless of what level you play it. When you can't do the basics right under a suffering Premier League manager, you will lose to Coventry. You can barely muster an attack under a struggling championship manager, you will struggle to see off Shrewsbury. Similarly, if you coach a League One side to fire on all cylinders then there's little reason why Jones couldn't at least improve Stoke. That being said, I think promotion would be both a step too far and a disaster this season. I hope the performances improve until May as Jones' philosophies begin to kick in, by which point we face a huge summer transfer window and a much-needed clear-out has to finally happen. Once Jones has his team and the style of play he demands from his players, we can aim for automatic promotion next season. Until then, I'm just looking forward to enjoying football again.